We pulled out the honkin' heckin' buttons, trademark, user interface we made last year, and we designed a brand new game for the Commodore 64 and took it all to the Vintage Computer Festival Southeast at the Southern Fried Gaming mm -hmm. Expo 2024. What happened next? Stick around and find City out. Man. See, it's very engaging and it's easy to understand once you get past the learning curve of learning the rules of the game. And so now, without further ado, we're going to go over the rules of Wackadoodle so that you can understand how the game works as well. City Man. <laughs> uh, this is Deadline, I'm coming to you live from the Vintage Computer Festival Southeast in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have over here our table set up. We have a carefully selected conglomeration of some of our older videos, some of our newer videos, and just all kinds of our content. Just playing on the loop. And then here we've got Stacy from HR, uh, the LOABC Corporate Executive AI. And she got feedback from her superiors that she needed to be part of the show more and so here she is and it's a special interactive mode where you press any button and then she'll give you messages your feedback is coming up we must resolve to be efficient and so there you go stacy ladies and gentlemen Helmet Guy's helmet. Unfortunately, Helmet Guy couldn't be with us this year. He's in Army Advanced Infantry Training and he graduates in a couple of weeks. We got the uh, trademark disco ball and the Programmonomicon from our Encrypted Tales Halloween video we did last year. But the main attraction here is the Wackadoodle game. And uh, I made this game using Kick Assembler. Once I got it into a playable state, we did some pretty extensive play testing, but I also took it to the Atlanta Historical Computer Society so that we could get some feedback from actual users. And we want to give a special shout out to Log from the Atlanta Historical Computer Society. This guy is single-handedly the reason why we had to increase the timer speed ups. Although seeing it being played at the show we might want to turn down some of the settings just a bit. But we are planning on putting on different modes so we can play this in like a bar setting or kids mode or something like an arcade. I've already created an itch.io site for Wackadoodle so you can go and download it. Link will be in the description. But I will be putting it on the GitHub as well and covering it in future programming series. Also, side note, it's already been cracked and trained so you can have infinite lives. So you see it's hooked up to the user port here. I've got the Kung Fu Flash from the Future was 8-bit, just so we wouldn't have to worry about hauling a disk drive out here, right? And so it goes down through the user port to the back of here, and there's a relay board here, and there's also power connected to light up the buttons. So I've programmed the Commodore 64 to work this little button board that we made. We call it the Honkin' Heckin' Buttons trademark. Throughout the show, we received lots of feedback from folks who wanted to play the game at home with their own controller for the game. So, after the show, we reached out to our friend Mike at Retro Game Boys, who makes custom retro controllers for various retro systems. We asked him if he would be interested in designing an NES style controller that would work with the Wackadoodle. He was excited at the opportunity and started right away and sent us this video of his design in progress. We are super excited about his design. So look for that new controller in his shop when it becomes available. And his link is in the description if you have any other custom controller needs. Another little side note is that we reached out to Saul Cross who wrote the fairground tune in the SID for the Commodore 64. And he allowed us permission to use his song but here's where it gets even better the background music you're listening to is by saw cross and he goes by sc12 and you can find him on bandcamp and spotify and i'll make sure and we put a link in the description so you can go check his Did music out so thank you sc12 you rock we'll talk more about the wackadoodle gameplay rules in a minute but first let's take a look at all the folks who stopped to play the game and many came back time and time again for more. 
It is very addictive and challenging. And we just want to give a shout out to everyone who stopped by our table and played the game and gave us lots of great feedback. City Man. Zamfir, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, the city Zen booth is just a plethora of strange things happening. As you can see, it's very engaging and it's easy to understand once you get past the learning curve of learning the rules of the game. And so now, Without further ado, we're going to go over the rules of Wackadoodle so that you can understand how the game works as well. City Man. So here are the rules for Wackadoodle. You have eight doodles that will pop up on any button at any time. Only one button will be lit up at a time and only one of the doodles will be active at a time. There are four bad doodles and four good doodles. The good doodles you do not hit, and the bad doodles you do hit. So there's a little bit of concentration involved. You have six lives to begin. If you hit a good doodle, then you will lose one score and one life, but you can't go under zero for score. If you hit a bad thing, then you get plus one score. If you miss a bad thing, then you lose one life. And so it will time out if it is left unattended. One thing that is not mentioned in the instruction screen is that the game gets progressively faster and every 40 points that you score, it then again increases in speed and difficulty. And so that is the rules for Wackadoodle. We are going to try to port this over to Atari and Apple and other 8-bit systems, maybe even TRS-80, whatever we can figure out, right? But we're also going to try and port this over to Steam for PC and create a custom USB HID interface. On one other note, Idle Picks, the meatloaf creator, worked on an API to try and get in a high score system before the show, but we didn't have enough time. We did, however, get the meatloaf to transfer the high scores and also to enter contestants information into the website over at meatloaf. So that is an exciting development in and of itself because we have meatloaf integration in Wackadoodle. It's just we have to get it more polished before we can release it. City Man. Selling over here with City Zen on day three of SFGE and the Vintage Computer Festival Southeast. We have had such an amazing success this year with our wackadoodle game. People have been coming to play it over and over and over again. And we've gotten requests to port it to other systems. We are so excited about the things that are coming up. And if you missed us this year, make sure to come next year so you can see all the amazing things that we are going to do. And also in 2025, we're taking the, um, the show on the road. We'll be visiting other vintage computer festivals. Um, I know we're planning on doing Midwest and probably Southwest. So Texas and Chicago at least, maybe Jersey, we'll have to see. So look for us there. Check out this really cool super pet that we picked up. Stay tuned to City Zen for more coverage of the Southern Fried Gaming Expo right here on our channel. Thanks for watching. City Zen. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel right here on City Zen. Play for my City Zen for a different